Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, a country we've been hearing a lot about lately. Slit throats, burnt villages, dead children and raped women in the thousands. But some Burmese officials are claiming this is fake news, saying Rohingya Muslims set their own homes ablaze to hijack the world's attention. Over 200 villages were burned to the ground, tens of thousands of homes, all to attract international attention. Sorry, but the evidence says otherwise. This is a scorched earth, you know, burn it and shoot it army. And, you know, they have once again committed ethnic cleansing uh, in this time against the Rakhine. 400,000 Rohingya have fled, over 200,000 of whom are children. Refugees say the army is planting mines along the border with Bangladesh and soldiers are shooting at them as they try to flee. The UN is calling it a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. But Myanmar's de facto leader, a human rights hero, doesn't think so. It is very little known that the great majority of Muslims in the Rakhine state have not joined the exodus. More than 50% of the villages of Muslims are intact. The whole world stood by Aung San Suu Kyi, even giving her a Nobel Peace Prize for nonviolent struggle for democracy and human rights. The media sowed all this hope the once regal prisoner of conscience would become a human rights icon. Global symbol of peaceful resistance to oppression. And she is still viewed as a symbol of democracy. Aung San Suu Kyi, non-violent warrior. That icon of democracy. Nope. She let us know from the start. I would like to be seen as a politician, she said, after her release from house arrest in 2010, not as someone who stands up for the oppressed. So as the world cries out that the bloodshed must be stopped, no one is actually doing anything to stop it. What are they doing instead? You guessed it. Selling weapons. China, Russia, Israel, India, Ukraine. For the last 30 years, these have been the top military suppliers to Myanmar. The US and Europe have had an arms embargo on the country since the 90s, but they aren't doing much else. In fact, Israel kept selling weapons to the country even after the crisis intensified. Buddhist nationalists in Myanmar say there's no place for people from Bangladesh who are illegally occupying their country. Doesn't that just seem like a convenient justification of the current purge to make it look like a historic right with the goal of wiping an ethnic minority off the map? The story isn't so cut and dry for the Rohingya Muslims who've called Myanmar their home for generations. I don't recall seeing anything as awful, as terrible as I am seeing here. Um, the crimes against humanity, the ethnic cleansing for which the government of Burma is responsible are like nothing I've witnessed before. I visited a hospital yesterday. Children ages 1, 5, 10 suffered burn wounds, gunshot wounds, and with human beings essentially treated like animals. I'm not saying the latest bloodshed came out of nowhere. It began after suspected Rohingya terrorists attacked security forces. And Myanmar's military has a right to fight insurgents, but not civilians. If everyone fighting terror used that as an excuse to wipe out an entire people, not very many of us would be left. Now the obvious question here is how many people have to die before this is stopped? And the less obvious one, is the world not actually doing anything because it's Myanmar. Far away, not a major player or strategic position. It's not Syria, not the Balkans, not the Korean Peninsula. It's Myanmar. Think about it.